Hi and welcome. I'm Julianne Cost and in the next few minutes we're going to take a look at how we can use Lightroom and Photoshop in order to straighten the horizon and then add some additional information around the iceberg on the left. So I'll start by tapping the R key that gives me the crop tool and then I will click and drag in order to rotate it and straighten that horizon. Then I'll apply that crop, but I want to add a little bit more space on the left hand side, so I'll use the transform panel and I'll drag the aspect slider over to the right. That's going to squish the image and then I want to move it over to the right hand side, so I'll use the X offset in order to reposition the photograph within that canvas. That's going to give me the ability to add more water here and make it a little bit more balanced. I'll use the photo menu and choose edit in, and then we can edit this in Photoshop. All right, let's go ahead and zoom in. I'll tap the home key so that we're viewing the upper left of the image, tap the M key to select the marquee tool, and then start dragging out my marquee. Now, when I use generative fill in Photoshop, it currently generates an image that is 1024 pixels. So you might want to use this heads up display in order to gauge how large your original selection is. So for example, if I don't want Photoshop to have to interpolate up the information, then I wouldn't want to put my height greater than 1024. All right, I'll use generative fill and then choose generate. Photoshop will create a new generative fill layer in the layers panel, and it will create three different variations of content that I can choose from in the properties panel. Once I've decided which one I like the best, I can go ahead and delete the other two variations to keep my file size smaller. Now, it might be difficult for you to see this in the video, but I can tell that there's a slight discrepancy between the content that was generated and the original image. It just seems to be a little bit darker, and that could be because the generative fill layer is being created in the sRGB color space, and this image is in a larger color space. It's in the Adobe RGB color space. So if this ever happens, we can select the curves adjustment layer at the bottom of the layers panel, make sure that it's clipped so that it's only affecting the generative fill layer, and then place a point on the curve, and you can drag to lighten or darken that area. If you need to make a very small adjustment like I am, you can hover your cursor on top of the selected point and then use the arrow keys to nudge the curve up and down as well. All right, let's go ahead and move down in the image. I will create the second selection here. Again, watching the heads up display if I don't want Photoshop to have to interpolate it. And this time, because I'm on a curves adjustment layer, I can't simply choose generative fill. So I'll go ahead and create a new blank layer, which will then enable me to choose generative fill and then generate. Let's go ahead and speed this up. And this time I think it matches perfectly, so I'll delete the other two variations. All right, making our next selection, again, watching that heads up display so we don't make it too large. I can use the contextual taskbar again, or I can simply click on generate in the properties panel because I was on a generative fill layer. Again, we'll speed this up. Out of the three variations, I like the first one the best, so I'll go ahead and delete these two. And then we can continue moving down the image. This area here might be a little tough, so I might want to make my selection a little bit smaller and then fill that first and then select this area here, which might be a little bit more difficult because I actually only want water here. I don't want any more ice. I want this iceberg to end so that it doesn't touch the edge of the photograph. All right, out of these three variations, I'll choose that middle one and delete the others. Scoot down, and I'm going to get a little bit wider of a selection here, and then choose to generate. As we can see in all three variations, Photoshop is actually creating additional ice in that area. So I can choose to generate again, or we can delete this layer and then add a blank layer and we can help Photoshop. I'll tap the S key to get the clone stamp tool and I'm going to option click in a good area of the image. And then I'm just gonna clone in this area here 
And then I'll do the same down here. I'll hold down the Option key, and then I'll just clone up in here. So again, it doesn't have to be perfect, because I'm going to switch to the Lasso tool, and then come right along this edge here, and come down here, and select this large area, and then choose Generative Fill and Generate. And here we can see we get a different result, still a little too close to the edge. That one's better, but I think I'll go with this third one and go ahead and delete the other two. All right, let's move on down. I'm gonna tap M, that will give me the marquee tool, and I'll make my selection here, and then we can generate some water. And while you might be thinking that the water would be easy to generate, waves, especially waves with the sun at an angle, are actually quite difficult to clone. So the first variation looks good. Let's delete the other two, and we'll scoot down to the bottom of the image, and we will generate again. And then I'll tap the end key, which will take us over to the bottom right. I'll switch to the lasso tool again, and I'm just gonna select this area here where we can see that the waves from the ship are actually making these ripples in the water. I'll choose to generate, And again here, I can see a discrepancy in the image area between the original and what was generated. It's a little bit darker, so I will add another curves adjustment layer, make sure that it is clipped, add my point, and then I can use the up arrow in order to lighten that. Excellent, let's zoom out. And now I want to add some grain to all of the generative fill layers at one time. While I could add it to each one individually, I think at this point it would be easiest for me to select all of the layers except for the background and then drag them into their own group. I'll toggle the visibility for the background, do a quick select all, and then edit, copy merged, and then edit and paste. Now we have all of the generated content on its own layer. I can toggle off the visibility of the group and toggle on the visibility of layer zero. With layer three targeted, I wanna convert it to a smart object before I add the filter. So I'll choose filter and convert for smart filters. This way, if I don't add the right amount of grain the first time, I can always come back and make adjustments. Then I'll zoom into 100% and let's move over to the edge. Here we can see this is the original photograph with the grain, and here is the generative fill content. So I'll select filter and then camera raw as a filter. I'll want to zoom in to the same percentage and then just pan over to the edge so that I can compare the generated information with the original information. And in the effects panel, I will add a bit of grain. I'm going to decrease the size a little bit and then also decrease the roughness. Once I get the amount of grain to match, we can go ahead and apply that. And we can see without the grain and with the grain makes quite a bit of difference in believability. All right, let's zoom out and I'll do a quick Command S in order to save this. And then we can return to Lightroom and toggle between the original image and the retouched image in Photoshop. 